And then he goes into a spiel about the reason that we are seeing this is because of Donald Trump and he is a climate change denier. In other words, he is a heretic, a non-believer in the God of climate change. Therefore, the climate change God has become angry with us and has now punished us divinely through these cataclysmic weather events. This is straight up religious rhetoric. And I know I'm a minister. <laughs> Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, this one's going to be brought to you by Joe Biden. That's right, the man that is running on the Democrat ticket himself, Joe Biden. He called Trump a climate arsonist, which I found hilarious on a number of levels, but we'll just go ahead and dive right into this one. Check out this clip of Joe Biden speaking the other day. Floods and droughts across the Midwest. The fury of climate change everywhere. All this year. And right now, Donald Trump's climate denial may not have caused these fires and record floods and record hurricanes. But if he gets a second term, these hellish events will continue to become more common, more devastating, and more deadly. No! Wildfires are burning the suburbs in the West. Floods are wiping out suburban neighborhoods in the Midwest. Hurricanes are imperiling suburban life along our coast. We have four more years of Trump's climate denial. How many suburbs will be burned in wildfires? How many suburban neighborhoods will have been flooded out? How many, Joe? How many suburbs will have been blown away in superstorms? Hallelujah! If you give a climate arsonist four more years in the White House, why would anyone be surprised if we have more America blaze? If you give a climate denier four more years in the White House, why would anyone be surprised when more of America is underwater? We need a president who respects science, who understands that the damage from climate change is already here. Everybody is fo focusing on the climate arsonist part of that, and I understand why. It's funny, it's goofy, it's dramatic. But I actually want to focus on the other stuff. But before we do, I'm going to just explain one. To be fair, and I understand why people are focusing on it, Trump did want to nuke a hurricane. So maybe at least in that one sense, he is a climate change arsonist. I like Trump's idea of nuking the hurricane. If nothing else, it would blow off some steam for us. <laughs> let's, let, let's nuke Sally. Uh, apologies for any of you whose name is Sally. I'm talking about the hurricane. Anyway, uh, YouTube is probably going to kick me off of YouTube for that, saying that I was threatening all women named Sally or something ridiculous like that. But <laughs> it's hilarious that a guy that is actually supporting and people inside his campaign, by the way, egged on by his VP candidate Kamala Harris, are actually bailing arsonists out of jail so that they can presumably go out and commit more arson. And he's calling Donald Trump a climate change arsonist. But the more important part of that is actually all the stuff surrounding the arson analogy. Because the arson analogy and Joe Biden making it, yeah, that's pretty funny. But actually all the stuff around it is more important because you, you remember that I actually yelled out hallelujah in a joking, mocking kind of tone. And the reason that I was saying that is because Joe Biden gets his dander up. He starts talking somewhat like a minister and he does so using apocalyptic language. I mean, you look through that clip, listen to everything he was talking about. He was saying suburbs are going to be burning and there's going to be American cities underwater and the, the moon will turn to blood and the mountains will melt and the sky will fall. The stars will not give their light. That's basically what it sounded like when Joe Biden was talking. He sounded like an Old Testament prophet trying to give out that sort of mentality. And it will all be caused by Donald Trump being reelected to be in there for four more years. This is the epitome of what we were talking about last week. Remember where we were discussing the mask being sort of a, a political totem, a religious totem for those on the political left. It became something 
that they were kind of trying to project to other people where they stand and, and what their opinion is on it more so than it actually being effective. And if I, I just believe hard enough in science and I, I believe the stats and the numbers and I, I do all of these things exactly right, then I will be protected mystically. There will be a, a magical hedge about me that will protect me from the virus. This is another version of exactly the same thing. In fact, until this virus, the most common use of or the, the most common examples of scientism took place in those in the climate change crowd. And so this is sort of a callback to that sort of thing. Because you'll listen to what he was saying there. He's saying that the reason that all of this is happening is because, and, and this is a direct quote from what Joe Biden said, it's the fury of climate change. That's what we're experiencing, the fury of climate change, as though climate change is a deity that is angry with us for not behaving in a way that the climate change God would deem worthy. That's what it sounds like. And then he goes into a spiel about the reason that we are seeing this is because of Donald Trump and he is a climate change denier. In other words, he is a heretic, a non-believer in the God of climate change. Therefore, the climate change God has become angry with us and has now punished us divinely through these cataclysmic weather events. This is straight up religious rhetoric. And I know I'm a minister. <laughs> This is something that it has religious zeal and weight. This is what Joe Biden is trying to convey here. And I don't know that Joe Biden wrote this speech. Frankly, based on Joe Biden's behavior of late, I severely doubt that. But, nonetheless, this is the way that Joe Biden has chosen to portray himself. And it's probably being done by his handlers and his speechwriters. I doubt that he wrote that. But there are people in Joe Biden's camp that do believe this stuff. This is written like a warning saying that Donald Trump, you know, even if he's not the cause for it right now, if we have four more years of President Trump, you're going to have these cataclysmic weather events because the climate change gods will be mad at us. That's what they're saying here. If you just believe hard enough in climate change, instead of having a non-believer in the White House, then all of these things will be cleansed and will be okay. We, we need a true believer in climate change in the White House. That's what Joe Biden is saying. This is a microcosm for why Trump makes the left so crazy. If you wonder why the Trump derangement syndrome is so bad, because believe me, I was not a fan of President Barack Obama. And I went overboard sometimes in my criticism of him because of how much I disliked the guy. I get that I have personal bias, too, and it plays into it. But even though there were a handful of conservatives that I, th took, I thought took it way too seriously, the vast majority of them didn't. The vast majority of them just went about their lives, and yeah, they didn't like the guy in the White House, and they didn't like the fact that the economic recovery was taking so long, and they didn't like the fact that he was constantly going on apology tours and Obamacare and all the other stuff that happened. But... As crazy as that made us, it was nothing compared to Trump, Trump derangement syndrome. I mean, Trump derangement syndrome is a thousand times worse than that. If you want to know why, it's that people that are conservative, we see government as something that's important, but it's not the most important thing. To a liberal, to somebody that is a, an actual progressive or a socialist, Government is the most important thing because their God is socialism and the church of socialism is government. Government is the way that the will of socialism is enacted here on earth. I'm telling you, socialism is a secular religion. It is, I mean, it doesn't have religion in the sense that, well, it does have mysticism actually, but in all of the classical ideas of what a religion is, they've got all of it. And this is going back to that. This is sort of the idea of scientism, because instead of science being a, a method and something that we can study and observe, and sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, sometimes it has to be adjusted, uh, scientism is this magical, perfect MacGuffin that can always solve our problems if we just believe in it hard enough. That's not how this works. The idea that any president holding office for four more years, 
could cause some kind of earth-shattering cataclysmic event, or that electing somebody else would prevent said cataclysmic events, is so absurd, I don't even know where to start on it. Because when you're talking about even the most hardcore believers in the climate change apocalypse saying, well, if we do all these things, then it might cause a the temperature to go up 0.4 degrees Celsius less in the span of 100 years than it would otherwise. Well, electing one president of one country is not going to change that. Not one iota. Now, you could say, again, if you were a believer in the, the climate change nonsense, if you were a believer in, in all of that, and, and some of it's legitimate, most of it's not, but even if you were 100% a climate change alarmist that believed this is going to cause the world to end, even their scientists are saying that it would have to take place over every single country, and it would have to take place over the next 100 years. President Trump being elected is not going to cause cataclysmic events and having Joe Biden in the White House or, you know, more realistically, Kamala Harris. That would not do anything to stop these events if they are already in motion. There is nothing that any president could do, even if they completely eliminated fossil fuels for the next four years. We, we had no electricity, no power, no cars, nothing. We used no energy. We were completely green. We, uh, we emitted zero carbon emissions for the next four years still wouldn't have a big enough impact to change the weather in such a short amount of time, even according to their own scientists. It's a process that would take decades, not election cycles. And so it's so absurd that they have bought into this god of collectivism and they worship at the altar of government because to them, that is the ultimate. And that's why Trump drives them so crazy. Let's say you were a Catholic. Let's say you were a Catholic, and all of a sudden, the next person that becomes Pope, the leader of your church, is a man that is a ardent, radical, militant atheist that hates Catholicism, thinks that it's wrong, thinks that it's stupid, thinks that the Catholic Church has been really more of a force for evil in the world than it has been for good. That'd drive you crazy, wouldn't it? I mean, you would absolutely be pulling your hair out thinking, how on earth could this man be the Pope? How could this be the guy leading the Catholic Church? It doesn't make any sense. That's what Trump is to these people. He is a heretic that doesn't like government, that thinks that it's primarily been a force that gets in people's way and causes more problems than it causes solutions. And that's the guy running the government right now. And to them, government is the church. And to them, collectivism and socialism is their God. Ergo, if that's the person that is in charge of their church, that's why it drives them absolutely over the wall. That's why they can't stand it. To them, it does have religious importance because they believe in collective salvation and heaven here on earth. And so this is the person that is preventing them from going to heaven because he's ha the, the heaven utopia, the, you know, the, basically the song Imagine by John Lennon. That's uh, John Lennon. I said Lennon. Uh, John Lennon. That's their idea of what heaven is supposed to be. And the only guy that is preventing them from doing that is Donald Trump because he is the head of their church and he's not believing in climate change, which is the reason that he has angered the climate change gods. And now all of these horrible things are taking place. You see how that would drive somebody just absolutely up a wall? That's why the Trump derangement syndrome is having such an effect on them. People ask me all the time, Caleb, how do you stay in such great shape? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. The Secret is a steady diet consisting mostly of likes and subscriptions, especially the ones where the person hits the notification bell. That's what actually gives me my superhuman strength. Likes, as it turns out, are very high in protein and iron. Sadly, doesn't do anything for your hair.